So the one thing I've always wanted to do is to be able to program right on the propeller without having to go get that thing and hook it up to write code. Even though that does a really good job, I, I just I just like 40 by 23 text with no windows and no mouse. I can't help it. All right, so so most of you recognize this. This is just Prop DOS, which is the little DOS sh uh, shell simulator, and I'm going to use that as kind of my launching point for this demo. And what I've got here is I've got a uh, a little proto board with a uh, with a card that I built on top of it that just plugs into it like a shield. That's got an SD socket and video and audio, and then a plug for a prop neck. So I've got a prop neck Ethernet card on the one side here. On the other side of my project, I've got a board that I took out of a Linksys Music Bridge. You can buy these things all over the internet for about $30. And what they're designed to do is they're designed to, you run a program on your PC and you stream your MP3 files into the program. And then you hook up your music bridge over by your stereo and it picks up that, that signal and it has RCA plugs on the outputs to plug into the ends of your stereo so you can listen to your music somewhere else in the house. But what I've discovered about the music bridge is that you can run it backwards. It will, um, it will act as an ethernet bridge. Now, most of the time when you buy an ethernet bridge, you're about a hundred bucks. So this will do the exact same job for about $30 shipped. So the other side of my project, I just I bought one of those music bridges and just ripped the plastic case apart and bolted that board into the into the case. And there's a little antenna inside here. And I'm going to set up, configure this prop neck for the network that's here at Parallax. Hopefully connect to the internet and be able to write spin code on here and hopefully execute it if this all goes well. Now I haven't run all the way through this in almost two weeks, so anything could happen here. So the first thing I need to do now, I, I will tell you this, that one of the downsides about the a music bridge is that you have to have to program it kind of ahead of time to connect to the network, and its interface is a JavaScript web browser interface. And so I've, I've done that before the demo, hooked it to my laptop and set it to recognize the uh, SSID with the, the web, web key and so forth. But now I'm gonna go ahead and configure my software and I, I wrote a little IP config because I didn't want to have to recompile every time I wanted to go to a different network. And so I'm going to go ahead and configure that for this network. Bear with me. Let's see. And no one's got 233. All right. And this is a Class C network. And so I need to do my gateway. There. Okay. And then the remote server is the server that's running, hopefully, over in Ohio, up in the office. And uh, I'm going to hit escape to write these changes off to my SD card. And I'm rebooting. Oh, there we go. Back to Wavies. Okay, and I'm just going to type add, and I should have a program. And there, yeah, there we go. I've got a program here that I'd already been working on, which is just you know, just every spin text. And uh, hopefully, when this runs, I'll get a hello uh, to unofficial Propeller West. So what I'm going to do is hit F1, and I'm going. This is running the remote compiler program, and I'm going to give it a name for the program when it comes back. UPEW.bin. Okay, cross your fingers. Out it goes to my server, maybe? Oh, that's not the answer we were looking for. All right, well, let me explain what should have happened. What should have happened, and we will pretend that on the screen, we have a server response from Apache with a little uh, PHP script that's running on my server. And what that script does is it receives the spin file as a text file. It uh, saves it to the drive. It then runs a uh, copy of BSTC, which is the Brad Spin compiler tool for Linux, um, and compiling it to a bin file on the server using the object library that I've loaded on that server. So I don't have to send it TV text and all those things. And then the script is supposed to send back a binary or .bin file that's written right back to the SD. Um, and then I should be able to reboot with PropDOS and run that executable. And, uh, and, and when everything is working and all the stars are properly aligned, it's, it works pretty quick, but it's failing now. The idea behind this, of course, is, uh, is uh, lose the PC altogether, go back about 15 years and, and put up with that interface. And, uh, and be able to write code right here on the propeller 
and send it out and get back and be able to execute that same code as if you were working on a little PC. As long as you've got an internet connection, as long as that is working, as long as the server is answering and the server has the same IP address, it's dynamic, and the code works properly and ships it back to you. Well, since I, since I couldn't make that work, at least let me show you one we, I did get working that will not depend on the internet, and that is uh, um, Michael Park, who is going to be next, actually wrote the editor that I'm using here. And so we adapted that editor not just to the remote compiler, but to also to, um, to basic. And, and FEM2, this will, and it will, it will jump back and forth very nicely. I can hit F1 from this version of FEM2 and go back to the program, make adjustments, F1 again, back and forth. So we, we finally have a nice editor that we can use, thanks to Michael Park, that we can use with FEM2 Basic. Do you have any restrictions on spin code? Um, supposedly, no. But I have run across two programs that, when they were compiled to binary, will not execute directly from PopDOS. And it is Defender is one of them. And it's still a complete mystery to me why they will not execute from here. But uh, uh, I, I basically stole the, uh, the routines for that from uh, Fem2Basic, Mike Green's Fem2Basic, and imported it into PopDOS. So it should execute bins without a problem. Um, so if I type, for instance, Right? There's my prop mini player. Let's see if I can make this work. Theoretically, anything that you compile as a bin and copy to the SD prop DOS should be able to pick it up and allow you to execute it by its name. So what's your, so do you have a memory overhead? Um, no, because, because what prop DOS is doing is it's removing itself from memory and it's just executing that, uh, that binary file. And then when you hit reset, it's picking up prop DOS from the EEPROM. Um, yes? Would you be willing to go with the resentences on any of On prop DOS? Well, for starters, this isn't real DOS. Um, this is kind of a, a DOS shell, as it were. And it's designed to, to mimic DOS. Um, it even mimics DOS folders, which really aren't available in the SD driver. And uh, execute binaries and so forth. Um, but it, it's it's a mimic. It's, it's a clever mimic. And that's all it is right now. I'm hoping uh, real operating systems like like Bill's will replace this completely. 